Hi everyone, welcome to this video and discussion on organizational analysis here for critical media studies. Uh, today we're going to take a look at how organizations impact um, the, the development of that media and how we can use that as a critical lens to examine and critically look at the different media that we encounter. So first of all, let's define what we mean by organizational analysis. Organizational analysis examines artifacts from the perspective that media is inherently influenced by the organization creating it. In other words, the, the uh, company that's making that, that media artifact um, will have an influence. The fact that it's made by a particular organization will have an influence on the eventual output there. So some of the major premises here, the big idea behind organizational analysis, the major tenets here. Um, first of all, organizations have structures. Every organization has a structure, and those structures are made up of three things. First, a hierarchy. There's a there's a pecking order. There's a there's a, a power structure in place. Uh, somebody reports to somebody else, and uh, whether that's formalized or informalized, whether there's a lot of layers there or not a lot of layers, somebody's in charge. Somebody's making decisions, and there's a hierarchy. There, there's, a, there's a, a power structure in play in organizations. There's also differentiation or what we would call specialization. Right? Some people have specific duties, things that they're really good at. Um, so that's something that, uh, you know, back uh, 150 years ago, you had one person that kind of did everything and they had a lot of, you had a lot of jack of all trades, right? Jacks of all trade. And, uh, but now we have a very specific kind of, we expect a kind of specific skill set. You know, we expect one person to do one thing very well, and we pair that with somebody else who does something else very well. We have a lot of differentiation and a lot of specialization in organizations today, and uh, so that's a, that's a major aspect of, of organizational structure. Then you also have this idea of formalization. Okay, formalization, uh, how strict are those relationships between those things? What is the power structure there? How much separation is there between you know these things? Is this a you know a union shop so to speak where people have very specifically defined responsibilities and you're not really allowed to do other things, right? If you're on a movie set, people are hired to do a very specific thing. You're not if you're if you're not hired to move that light from one place to the other, then you better not be touching that light, right? If, if you're on a if you're on a major movie set, there's a lot of specialization there. But if you're, you know, just got kind of an independent deal where it's you and your buddy making a movie, then obviously there's a lot less formalization in those roles and, and in the hierarchy there. Um, so different organizations have these different structures, but they all have structures. We all have structures. Okay? The structure of each organization is unique, though, as we were just kind of indicating. Every organization has its own type of structure between those three different things. They have different types and expectations between the hierarchy and differentiation and formalization. So every organization is unique, which leads to the, the, uh, the unique uh, output that each one has. That uniqueness affects the output. Right? So every organization, every media organization is going to approach something differently and end up with a different product. Right? If you, if you take one movie, if you take a, I don't care, pick your movie. If you take, if you take uh, The Godfather right? and it's not directed by Francis Ford Coppola, it's directed by somebody else, it's directed by Martin Scorsese, it's directed by somebody else, that's a different movie. Right? It's going to have a different sensibility. It's not going to be the same thing. It's going to be uh, very different. Okay. doesn't mean it'll be better or worse necessarily. It'll just be different because it'll have uh, that other person's uh, fingerprints on it, right? Um, so the uniqueness of that organization, of each organization, uh, is what makes it provide a unique output there. We need to understand that. That's the pr one of the premises of, of organizational analysis, so understanding that. Yeah. So uh, some contemporary perspectives on this. Um, first of all, there's a gatekeeping function. This, this in modern times, this the the structure of these organizations. Um, we need to understand that this uh, establishes kind of a gatekeeping function where it goes through a process. And uh, so, for example, uh, the easiest example is the news. Uh, who decides what gets on the news? Who decides what stories get reported and and what perspective we they take on those? And who does what? The organization does, right? So there's a gatekeeping function for that. And that's true of any media organization, not just the news, but who decides what movie gets made? Somebody at the top, somebody who's greenlighting movies that thinks it's a good idea, right? So th this movie is a good idea or that one is not. There's a gatekeeping function here. So um, that's important to keep in mind uh, from from a contemporary perspective that, that, uh, that that's something that influences um, the media as well. What, what gets put out there and doesn't, uh, there's a gatekeeping function that's created by this. 
There's also lots of hands that touch a lot of these things, right? Uh, again, by the time a, a piece of media gets to you, it's been touched by a lot of people. It's been, you know, selected by somebody, the gatekeeping function, but then it's also maybe gone through, you know, just take a movie, for example. Like it just, it just as an easy example, a movie um, goes through not only getting green light and picked to be made, but then, you know, one or two directors, maybe whoever decides to make it. And then you've got the executives influencing it. You got different actors making choices. You got a producer, you got editors who are making editing choice. There's lots of hands touching this film as it goes through. You've got that, that primary sense of direction from the director, right? But there's still lots of hands that are touching this and how it's promoted and all that kind of stuff comes in the marketing department. Uh, so there's lots of hands that are touching media before it ever gets to you. And then we now have the impact of social media, right? And the way that it has influenced uh, the creation of media. We have what we call citizen journalists, right? P the people can uh, kind of report on their own. We see that through, uh, and it's not just reporting in a, in a news sense, but we see the impact that it's had in terms of um, the, you know, the if we look at the George Floyd murder, right? I mean, that was primarily prosecuted on the back of um, uh, what we would call citizen journalism by people just getting out their phones and recording it, right? I mean, that was some of the primary reason that that came uh, to fruition, that that case and that uh, that verdict came to fruition. We look at the the, um, the, the insurrection on January 6th um, after the, the uh, 2020 election, so January 6th of 2021, um, the impact that, that we had there of social media that people have been prosecuted. People have been found because people had their phones out and they were recording it as they went into the Capitol and other people were recording them uh, as actual journalists coming in. And, and so there were lots of impact of, of social media and how people viewed that and how we frame these things. Um, has a, we don't have necessarily that intermediary, which is both good and bad. Um, there, there's something to be said for the intermediary, for example, of news organizations, people who are professional journalists who, who report for a living and, uh, and, and, I'm not talking about the pundits who come on at night on these major channels. I'm not talking about you know the people who are just there for opinion shows. I'm talking about real journalists who do real work, who have a code that they that they work by and are reporting good things and uh, and, and important information. Uh, there's something to be said for that kind of function as opposed to somebody who just films something with their camera, decides to post it on social media and make a lot of commentary about it. So I mean, the, the, those are just the, that's the world we live in, though. Uh, so that's that's a contemporary perspective uh, that we need to consider the impact of social media too on these organizations and how they've had to operate, how they've had to adjust. Um, so anyway, that's had a major influence on these things. Some of the common questions we ask in organizational analysis include who created this artifact, what's the purpose and the values of that organization or that individual. So not only who made it, but who, who are they really? What's important to them? Um, what is their purpose? What is their stated set of values? Where do they come from in, in, in terms of their, their belief systems and things like that? How do that purpose and, and values impact the creation and presentation of that artifact? Right. So when we look at, at uh, I can keep coming back to news, but uh, when we look at news and we get it from these different outlets, uh, is this an ultra conservative uh, channel of news or is this an ultra liberal channel of news or is this something straight down the middle? I have several news apps on my phone and I won't get into the specific ones, but I can tell you what I have is the, is the Associated Press because it tends to be straight down the middle, just more regular, I mean, just straight up journalism. And that's what they do is they report uh, as opposed to having an agenda uh, in a sense. Now, there's still a gatekeeping function. There still is an agenda, but it's they're, they're, they're really their goal is to remain as unbiased as possible. Right? And that's not the goal of all news organizations. So so I want to know that. I want to know what's their purpose and, and how did that impact the creation and presentation of the artifact. You could turn on uh, MSNBC and Fox News at any given moment and hear them arguing two sides of the same story, presenting it completely differently because of their values and the, and the impact that that had on the creation and presentation of that artifact. And what's the agenda behind the artifact? Is there an agenda? Uh, is uh, you know, Do they have one? And if so, what is it? We need to recognize that. What's And again, that comes back to kind of the values and the purpose of the organization. So one example we can look at, and this is uh, this is uh, close to my heart as a fan as a fan of Saturday Night Live, especially growing up. Norm Macdonald was uh, was fantastic as the anchor of Weekend Update. I really looked forward to that every weekend, and uh, and appreciate what what he did with that. Um, and so for years he was the great uh, anchor for Weekend Update. Did a lot of great work, and one of the things he, he notably did toward the end of his career there was uh, a comment a lot during the O.J. Simpson trial. 
and even after the O.J. Simpson trial uh, on on the situation that was happening there. And, and I was very clear about his um, feeling and belief that uh, O.J. Um, was, in fact, guilty of murder. And uh, so made that very clear. Was There was no question about that. But so did a lot of talking about um, O.J. Simpson as a as a murderer in a, in a, in a negative light. Right. So the, the, the head of NBC at that time, though, was a friend of O.J. Simpson and uh, a personal friend of O.J. Simpson and and told Norm MacDonald several times, stop talking about O.J., stop talking about it entirely and got the producer, talked to the producer and said, you get Norm to stop talking about it. And Norm said, no, no, it's news and it's funny. And it's, and it's I mean, it's it's relevant and it's not he said, it's not funny, but I can make a joke out of it. If they can put it on TV, I can make a joke out of it and and uh, and, and and bring some social awareness to this. And so he refused and he kept doing it. He kept talking about OJ week after week. He would on weekend update, he would find some way to to, to basically call OJ Simpson a murderer. And eventually the head of NBC said, fine, you're fired from from weekend update. You're no longer doing that. And he forced the producer of Saturday Night Live to take him off weekend update. And uh, all because he was a personal friend of OJ's and didn't like him talking about him that way. So that's an that's an you know an illustration in my mind of how an organization um, chooses a side in a sense, right? And, and some organizations do this and then makes decisions based on that. This was a totally personal decision. It was not a decision based on you know people are tired of hearing about OJ and they don't like what Norm is saying about OJ. This was a decision based on he's a friend of mine and I want you to stop. Because organizations are made up of people and organizations have hierarchies. And when you're a person that has more power in that organization, you can say to somebody, stop doing this or else. And he did. Norm was fired from Saturday Night Live's up, uh, weekend update. Eventually he left the show, I think, after that season and went on to do some other things. But uh, uh, but yeah, totally on a personal decision. So um, through that organization, the organization supported it on down. The producer said, OK, I mean, at some point, the producer said, Okay, I guess because I want to keep making the show and want to keep doing things, and so the organization there, if we were to look at that particular artifact, would uh, would have a major influence, right? Uh, if we want to again some more low hanging fruit that we could look at here, it comes to these news organizations, uh, especially the cable news organizations, and it's it's no secret. I don't think I'm spilling any beans when I say that they have an agenda. Several of these have an agenda. Uh, again, the media, the purpose of the media is to make money. And so these organizations, whether they start out this way or not, um, their their objective is to make money, right? That's the, that's the end goal. So if they find that they can make money by appealing to a certain audience, then that's what they're going to do. So Fox News has discovered that they can make uh, the most money for their organization by appealing to the very conservative um, audience. So that's, that's what they put on the air is a very pr- conservative perspective. MSNBC decided they could make money by going the other direction. And by presenting a more liberal argument, see, CNN's kind of in the middle and they're just kind of coming into this, though, really. CNN for years was a pretty straightforward news organization, um, had at one point about three times the number of, of editors and reporters and things, I mean, strictly news people that Fox News did. Fox News really has always hired more pundits and opinion people and, I mean, people that have no background in news. Uh, and, and that's that's okay. I mean, that, they're there to provide their opinion. They're there to make money for that organization, and they do that. Uh, CNN's just coming around to this a little bit, as you've noticed, you may have noticed, if you've been paying attention in the last five years or so. Shifting from, you know, they still do a lot of, uh, of of hardcore news stuff, straight up the middle news stuff, but they've started, especially in the primetime hours, presenting more opinions and pundit people and because they feel like that's where they can draw more audience and make more money as a result. So, um, so they're in the same business as everybody else, which is making money. And uh, so it's hard to blame any of these organizations for that. You may not like what they have to say. Any of these channels, you can you know name one. Uh, people watching this video probably there's some who are Fox News fans and some who are MSNBC fans, and that's fine. Uh, but you need to recognize that at the end of the day, they're all there for the same purpose. They're all really there to to provide an audience uh, for their uh, sponsors and to make money because that is the purpose of media. The media is to make money. So, but we need to consider the organizational perspective in all of this. When we hear a news story from Fox News, we need to understand it's coming from that conservative perspective. And the same with NBC. When we hear a news story from NBC, we need to understand that they're putting that liberal spin on it. And the the organization impacts the eventual product. Uh, again, you can take a movie. The Godfather goes through a different company. It's a different, even with Francis Ford Coppola, it goes through a different company. It's probably a different product altogether. There's a famous story about the Lord of the Rings trilogy. 
Um, when Peter Jackson first made it, a company didn't want it uh, that long, so he had to pare it down to, to, I think it was two movies or whatever, and, and then they dropped the project, and, and he went to uh, to uh, the new company, and, and he said, I want to make this, and they said, okay, but it, isn't it a trilogy? Why aren't you making three movies? Why is it two movies instead of three? And he said, oh, I'd love to do three. Go to a different company. It's a different situation altogether. Uh, that organization had a different perspective on things, and so, um, so that's true for all organizations. So when we're when we're analyzing the media, we're looking at the media critically. We need to understand where did this come from, and how did that organization impact the eventual product. So. Next time you're viewing uh, something, you're taking in some media of any kind, a movie, a, a news channel, any kind of thing like that, be sure that you're thinking about the organization that it came through and how that impacted things. So start to put some of that spin and look at things through that critical lens as well. If you have questions about organizational analysis or, or any kind of uh, question related to critical media studies, please feel free to email me. I'd love to communicate with you and, and chat with you via email and continue the discussion there. In the meantime, I hope that you'll you'll take up that lens, that organizational analysis lens, and really make that a part of your, your tool belt as you continue down uh, the journey here uh, looking into critical media studies.